Welcome to our ERC virtual Meet the Expert session, where I'm pleased to host John Matter, who is a neonatologist and chair of the NLS Science and Education Committee. Hi, John. Hi. John, can you tell us how high is the risk of COVID-19 infection in newborn infants and are babies more likely to need resuscitation? Okay, so the case series suggests that the risk of vertical transmission of severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS-CoV-2 at birth is unlikely. Um, there's a low risk of babies being infected at birth, even if born to a confirmed coronavirus positive mother. Um, it seems that maternal infection with COVID-19 may increase the risk of premature labor, and there appears to be a tendency for more deliveries to be via cesarean section. Um, with fetal compromise cited as an indication, um, and also possibly concerns about maternal health, which may also prompt uh, a decision to deliver early. Um, the necessary obstetric precautions against viral exposure might increase the time taken to deliver a compromised baby by section, but it seems that babies do not appear to be significantly more compromised at birth in the presence of COVID-19. So the indications for the attendance of a team uh, in advance um, are unchanged and the clinical factors which might prompt resuscitation remain unchanged, whatever maternal COVID-19 state. John, how, how does the approach to assessment and resuscitation differ from the usual approach? So the approach to the assessment of the baby at birth and any subsequent intervention is unchanged. Uh, it follows the current guidelines. Uh, there's no evidence that practice at birth should be changed and delayed cord clamping should be considered uh, and assessment on the perineum in that case, but with care. So any changes to the approach acknowledge the potential risk of cross infection uh, and the strategies are to protect those involved with the baby. It's suggested that ideally delivery of a baby from a COVID-19 suspected or positive mother would take place in a negative pressure room, but those are not always available uh, in all delivery areas or operating theatres. So as a minimum precaution, resuscitation of the baby should ideally take place at least two metres from the mother in order to minimize the risk of droplet spread. Um, provision of a mask for mum might reduce uh, the risk of droplet spread uh, and consideration might be given to having a partition in the room or even undertaking the resuscitation and assessment in a, an adjacent room if that facility exists. So where a team is called before delivery, um, some thought needs to be given to the composition of the team, uh, trying to minimize the number attending the delivery but making sure that within that team there is somebody experienced enough to be able to undertake any necessary practical procedures. Um, it's recommended that airborne precaution PPE be used as it's not possible to predict uh, when a potential airway generating procedure will be carried out. So if a team's called after delivery, of course, uh, the resuscitation may be ongoing in the room and the team arriving may not have PPE on and they're going to have to put the airborne precaution PPE on on arrival at the delivery area, so that may incur a delay. So it's important that teams call for help early enough. Um, and as far as the equipment used for resuscitation is concerned, some people have advocated using a filter um, on the seat, on the T-piece or the self-inflating bag um, to reduce the possibility of viral spread. Um, although the evidence that this is a problem in the newborn is lacking. So uh, following resuscitation or stabilization, um, if admission is required, uh, then it's recommended or suggested that the transfer of the baby take place in an incubator to reduce the risk of spread in transit from the delivery area to the neonatal unit. And the team escorting the baby need to consider uh, appropriate PPE for that trip. So if it's an unstable baby that might need intervention during the trip, then they might consider wearing full airborne PPE for that escort. Okay, a bit in addition to that, uh, John, what about postnatal collapse? So the management of postnatal collapse is unchanged, but the caveat is that the COVID-19 status of the mother and or the baby may not be known. So it's not possible to be sure whether a baby is infected with COVID-19 or not in some cases. Um, where it's not clear, um, precautions 
would appropriately be taking. So the team undertaking resuscitation of a baby where it's possible that they have COVID would have to wear airborne precaution PPE. Um, it's difficult for those who attend the resuscitation in the first instance because they will be in whatever PPE they're wearing in the department, which may not be full airborne PPE. Um, and that places a potential burden on those first resuscitators because although there's no published evidence that resuscitation required as a result of postnatal collapse poses an increased risk of infection, any decision to provide breathing support in the absence of full airborne PPE has to be made, um, recognising there may be a very small but increased risk of exposure to COVID-19. So in those situations, as in any, suction or advanced airway manoeuvres are required and they should be carried out by the team wearing full airborne PPE. Um, and if they need to intubate, um, depending on the circumstances, they might consider video laryngoscopy. Okay, and then my last question, uh, John, do babies need to be isolated after resuscitation? Um, the decision on whether to isolate a baby after resuscitation depends upon a number of factors, including local policies on how to manage babies in this situation. Um, for those who've required resuscitation and where there's a question as to whether or not they have got COVID-19, um, then if they need admission to the neonatal unit, um, they would be isolated on the neonatal unit. If the baby is well after resuscitation, it may be able to stay with mother, in which case it depends upon the considerations of the status of COVID-19 in mum, and the baby might be isolated with the mum, um, in which case normal care can take place. And that would include uh, matters such as breastfeeding. Uh, there's no clear evidence that breastfeeding is a route for infection, so that can be encouraged. Um, if mum's too sick, it may be possible to express milk and feed um, by other routes. Um, obviously, in these situations, um, mum must practice strict hand hygiene. And again, the use of a mask may reduce droplet spread exposure to any baby who is being breastfed. I thank you very much for your time, uh, John. That's Take okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.